Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at Statics OS. It is a Android Pi based custom ROM for our Nexus 6P. Now I know we still have one more month left on security updates, but I thought I would show this before it gets, uh, I guess, too old and something new is out there already. But here there are currently two Pi ROMs. One is kind of, I guess, a bit custom. So this one, Statics OS. And there's one that is just built off um, the Android open source project. So if you don't want any tweaks or anything like that, then there is another ROM, and I'll have that link down below anyways. And basically it's just Android Pie. But this one we're going to be taking a look at has a few features here. You can take a look at their XDA page for that. This will change, of course, inevitably when they add more features. And there are a few things such as DRM video playback does not work, and you get some snap, crackle, and pop in your audio during uh, your boot up sequence. Now recently they did change the encryption that is used on this ROM. Now it's file based and there are installation instructions, my favorite. So I'll just be going through this essentially. But as always, before you flash any kind of ROM, you'll want to read the instructions yourself and read uh, some recent posts to see if there are any issues with the ROM as well. So once you've discovered that, we just need to download a few things and this page has provided us with a few of those. So if we scroll down past the change log, and go down to the download section. You want to download the ROM, which is in this Mega folder. I know some people have issues downloading from Mega, but um, just see if you can download that from there. And of course, the Google Apps is from this other website. I think that is a direct link, yep. So you can download this if you want to. Uh, I'll be using something from Open Gaps, the mini package. So you can also do that as well. If you want to use the Open Gaps instead of the simple gaps here. So I would have selected mini, that's the one I'll be using in this video. And you'll need the boot loop of death fix. I'll be flashing this just to show you guys oh, how I think it should be done anyways. Uh, and last but not least, you'll want to also download their file based encryption compatible recovery image. Now I know uh, Osmosis actually has one that is uh, working with file based encryption. It is a few versions old from the latest version of TWRP, so I'll be using the recovery that they have provided here. So you can download the file-based encryption uh, compatible recovery image from here. So it is TWRP based. And once you have those files downloaded, you should have something like this. So I've also downloaded Magisk, and we'll probably root this phone. And here we have the workaround injector. We have our Google Apps. Uh, platform tools is not necessary. I'll be doing everything on the phone and the recovery image here and of course the custom ROM. So first things first, you want to back up anything you have on your phone because as part of the installation instructions, if we, oh, I can read it. Well, basically the instructions say we need to wipe our device because the ROM is now using the file-based encryption. So first things first, you want to back up everything you have on your phone. I don't have anything on this phone, so I'm not going to do that. But if you had pictures and music and stuff like that, as we are wiping our phone fully this time, you'll want to back those up as well. But once you've done that, all you have to do, and I forget to mention that a prerequisite for this is to already have a phone with a custom recovery on it that's working, and of course an unlocked bootloader. If you have a custom recovery, you don't have to be rooted already, but you will have to have an unlocked bootloader at least. So I'm going to copy stuff over to my phone real quick here. So all you have to do is open this up. That's the wrong thing. Here we go. And I'm just going to copy everything into the internal shared storage. It's going to replace some files. So we'll let that copy over the stuff that we need. So that's Magisk, our workaround injector, BLOD, our Google Apps package, the recovery image that they've specified that we should use, and the ROM itself. Okay, I'm just going to copy and replace these two as well. Okay, so you have everything that we need on our device. What we need to do now is simply reboot our phone into the recovery. So I'm going to just reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So to do that, just of course hold, oh sorry, restart your phone and hold power down and keep holding it until your phone boots into the bootloader. Okay, once we're in here, all you have to do is use the volume buttons to select recovery mode and then press the power button to select it and you should boot into TWRP. 
Okay, so you can see currently I have the uh, Osmosis's F file-based encryption compatible recovery installed. This also is patched to use four cores as well. So I suppose you can just strictly use this version of TWRP, one from Osmosis, but I'll be using the one from Statix OS instead. So first up, if we look at the installation instructions, I'll just read them from this point. Basically, we need to install the new or their own recovery image. So I'm going to tap on install and then tap on install image and this should change it so we'd be able to see the image file that we copied over. I'm going to tap on that, select a recovery partition to flash this to and swipe to confirm the flash. Once it says it's okay, I'm going to go back and back and then tap on install zip to go back to flashing zips and I'm going to be flashing the workaround injector right now. And you notice we haven't flashed any ROMs or anything like that, but this is so um, this workaround injector can patch the recovery image that we've just flashed. Otherwise, I don't think we'll be able to boot into that recovery image from my knowledge of the boot loop of death. I personally don't have the boot loop of death, so I could be wrong here. But at least this uh, workaround injector does patch the recovery partition as well. So once that is done, what you have to do now is to install the ROM. So I'm going to reboot back into the recovery to make sure we're using that. So I'm going to tap on reboot and then recovery. Okay, we're booting here. Let's see if we can decrypt. So you notice it's a newer version and this one should support the file-based encryption that they're going to use. Okay, looks like it's okay. They haven't changed too many things. So now what we need to do is install the ROM. So we just go through our usual process. We're going to locate the ROM. Here we go. Swipe to flash that. And just give this a couple minutes to do its thing. Okay, so we're done here. I'm going to go back and we're going to flash the Google Apps. And swipe to flash that. And this also will take a while, so just let this do its thing. Okay, so our Google Apps have finished installing. I'm going to flash Magisk. Just so we can root our phone. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to patch our ROM here again. Okay, so now we've finished the patching. We're going to go back one. And this is where we need to wipe our device to support the new file-based encryption. So you need to tap on wipe and then tap on format data. Type in the word yes. Tap on that tick and that will format our data. So if you run into an error wiping data or TWRP cannot remount your data after formatting it the first time, you may need to reboot back into the recovery and try to wipe your data once more. So just follow the same step, steps again. Just reboot back into the recovery and do our data format and then it should get rid of all the red text afterwards. And then from there you should be able to reboot your phone into the ROM. Okay, so our phone's booted up. It only took a maybe five minutes, I think. And there we are. That's the Android Pie welcoming screen. I believe we can skip it, but I think we should just set this device up as I normally would. And I would need to... No, I don't have a SIM card lying around. Wi-Fi, on the other hand. Oh, yeah. We can do that. So this is also a good um, thing to see if your Wi-Fi works. Let's just plug in the password real quick. And we can touch our sensor, and they also have the correct image on there. I know some ROMs don't have the same, I guess, they don't have the same image there when you set up your fingerprint. It just looks funny, that's all. I'm going to add my other finger. It definitely is a lot slower than our newer devices, but I guess this phone is just showing its age a little bit more. Okay, uh, no thanks. So it's just going to finish up. And there we go. Let's quick step. Ooh, 
That's a nice wallpaper, different from last time. The sound is working, that's nice. And we have a few things already installed. So this is with the mini gaps from the open gaps package, shush phone. And you can see everything looks quite nice at the moment. My Wi-Fi is connected, let's have a look at the settings. There are a few settings here in Sparks. And apparently there's some things that might break the installation, but we'll just have a look at what's available here. Quick unlock for the lock screen, so when you type in your PIN, it just automatically unlocks. Miscellaneous, we have nothing. Navigation, we have nothing. Oops. Status bar, we have... Ooh, battery icons. So we can have a circle one. I like the circle one. And we can show the battery percentage beside the icon, so when I unplug it should... Okay. There you go, just had to toggle it. I don't like the percentage icons, I think they look ugly. We also have sounds when we plug in our device, I'm sure you can turn that off. Uh, advanced restart, of course, that is just this menu here. So you can choose which mode you want to boot into. That's cool. The power menu, you can select what you want to see here, so maybe I want to access the settings or record my screen. And Smart Pixels is something I found on Resurrection Remix as well. It's just something that turns off pixels, I like a grid of them, you can see how the screen went a little bit darker. But if I increase the pixel size to say 88% of the pixels, so they turn off 88% of them in some kind of a pattern, and they should move every 10 minutes, yep, to prevent burn-in. And this is uh, apparently to save battery at the expense of brightness, it seems. But it's brightness because of the combined usage of the pixels. So if I switch that back up to, I think it was on 50%, I think that's pretty usable, especially if you need to save a bit of energy. So I might turn that on. And let's go back and see if we can enable gesture navigation. Oh, and, okay, so I'll finish what I'm talking about now. Swipe up on home button, so we can do that, no worries. It looks a bit different, but that means you can install um, lawn chair and I think it's called something something step, lawn step. And that allows lawn chair to kind of uh, take over the recent thing here. So I might be able to show that a little bit later in a different video. There's the digital well-being here, which I didn't think they had last time. I think I still need to install the APK because it's not installed, but oh no jokes. My phone's just a little bit slow. Okay, so it looks like if we go into... Okay, it's just loading. So we should still see the options that are usually available there. If I bring up my Pixel 2 again, I guess this will be a nice comparison between the two versions of Pi here. They should be the same. Okay, so... I guess we're waiting for some of these things. There we go. There we go, so we can do wind down. So that's pretty good. We have the night light, bedtime reminders, and the do not disturb mode. Okay, that's nice. Grayscale. That's nice, so we can um, schedule this as usual. That's pretty good. So we have digital well-being as well. Now I tapped on it a lot of times. Oh. So we also have the color theme here, which is nice. Let's see, ooh, did I see, okay, indigo, ooh, you can change the theme as well, that's nice, and I believe there is a all black or all dark mode somewhere. Yes, indeed. So, like a system-wide dark mode, get out of here. So this should be the always-on display as well. Yes, that's very good. And I think it was very smooth. So I think the last thing we'll check is, we'll grab CPU Z and also Magisk Manager installed. I'll just enable USB debugging. Okay, so we have our apps installed. I think the first thing we want to check is CPU Z for our disabled cores, unless it's because of how those cores weren't actually disabled, that's why the phone feels so smooth. And, uh, okay, I think that looks legit, so you can see our cores have stopped here, which means the patch has been applied, and yet this is still so smooth, I'm very, very impressed by this, so that's nice. 
They're all at 1555 megahertz, which seems a bit weird. Oh no, it's changing. That's good. So that's working. Next thing we'll check up is Magisk Manager to make sure that is also working. And yes, we are rooted here. Oh, what's this? Your device needs additional setup. Now, I believe that is because we formatted the data partition um, right after we flashed Magisk. So I guess it was expecting the, the Magisk image. So if we tap on yes, this should set up everything for us so we can use the uh, download modules and things like that with, for our phone. So we'll let Magisk do that. So I guess this uh, step is very important. Well, you'll end up going through this step anyways if you install Magisk. But yeah, let that do its thing. And I think that'll be it for this video. We'll probably take a look at some, some other ROMs in the future. And also, I guess, some Android Pie specific mods that will work on both, I guess, custom ROMs and also devices with the official Android Pie. Looks good. Uh, here's Lawn Step. That was what I was talking about as well. But we can take a look at that in a later video. So there we go guys, this is Statics OS Android Pie ROM, everything looks pretty good, the camera works well, as soon as you allow it the location. And in terms of bugs, I don't think there are too many at this point, uh, please of course read the XDA thread, and I believe this phone is very close to being something that you can use on a daily basis. So do give it a try, let me know how it goes. And as always, you can find me on Discord along with, I think, 20 or 60 other people. Can't really remember, but we have a good time there. So if you want to join us, chat about things Android or things that aren't Android, feel free to pop in. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, happy flashing.